but it is an important jewel for Muslims and for the history of this planet. What is interesting about this city is that it is also known as a walled city, as a forbidden city. And some sources even say it is the fourth most protected city in Islamic history. It was surrounded by an imposing wall. This wall was developed and established in order to keep out the wild beasts that prowled around in the evening in Ethiopia and also to protect the people from the roving nomadic uh, tribes and for the large armies of enemies who would appear. It is also important to understand that the city of Hara became a city of uh, scholarship and a city of spirituality. Hara itself, because of the uh, use of uh, new technologies, was able to develop a type of Islamic learning that was not found anywhere in the northeast part of Africa. For the people of, Horn of, of the Horn of Africa, Hara was a type of Mecca of knowledge. Hara was a forbidden city. Hara was a mysterious city. And above all, it was a city of high spirituality and scholarship. It is reported that up until the 19th century, no non-Muslim ever stepped foot in Hara itself. The city was completely developed and completely organized along Islamic lines and focused upon high spirituality. In 1854, Sir Richard Burton, disguised as a Syrian Muslim, speaking the Arabic language, came into Hara. He found a city with a beautiful climate. He found the people steeped in Islamic tradition and coming from different nationalities. He called it the Timbuktu of the East because um, Hara was blessed with great scholarship. The people of Hara had developed a type of uh, is, uh, Arabic calligraphy where they, were to, where they were able to beautify the texts. They were able to bring the classical uh, writings of scholars in such a way that it was pleasing to the eyes. And it is reported that the textbooks from Hara were sought after by the great rulers in the Islamic world and the Ottoman sultans way up in Istanbul would always ask for the Quran or for the texts of the scholars from the people of Hara. Today in this region there is a collection of Sharif Abdullah Ali which has brought forward uh, the beauty and the importance of the Arabic texts. And so we find texts dealing with different subjects. We find the tafsir, the explanation of the Qur'an. We find hadith, great books of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We find classical books in Islamic jurisprudence. We find the writings of great poets, we also find books on geography, mathematics, on philosophy. We find that the people of Hara were able to uh, bring in, understand the different parts of East Africa, record it in the Arabic language, and make it available for not only the people of their region, but the travelers and the scholars who passed through their area. Hara was recognized for the beauty of its architecture. Hara was recognized for the houses developed where the niche was put into the wall where porcelain from China was being used by the people over a thousand years ago, where high culture was found amongst the Muslim people living in that region. Before Nairobi and Addis Ababa, Hara was the most significant city in northeastern Africa and the Horn of Africa. Hara, you could say, was the jewel of the East. Hara was a place that the people had tried to, to reach from many parts of the world. 
but few were able to make it through the Ethiopian highlands, through the hostile tribes, and through the terrible wild animals that stalked the land. But those who made it to Hara found a beautiful culture, and they found not only scholarship, but they found uh, basket weaving. They found beautiful uh, clothing. And surprisingly enough, they even found the smallest coins in the world. It is said that the coins minted in Hara with the Arabic language were some of the most beautiful tiny coins ever to be found. And the uh, people of East Africa benefited from these coins. The people of other parts of the world eventually would find this tiny coin with La ilaha illallah on one side, which is there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad Rasulullah on the other side, written in such a tiny way that you need to have a special lens in order to read this. Imagine, this was being done over 800 years ago in the mysterious city of Hara. Another important aspect about the culture of the people living in this region was the relationship of the men to the women. The women of Hara played a very crucial role in the running of the city. The women of Hara were known for their strong personalities and also their, uh, uh, their skills in trade. The marketplace was controlled by the women. The women had a strong saying and when the Imam would meet with the people in the Ahli system, he would listen to the women and he would take the information from the women back to the Majlis Ashura and back to the Amir who was governing the town and establishing the way Hara would relate not only to its citizens but to other people coming into that region. And so Hara played a very important role in the Horn of Africa during this time. When we look at Hara in relationship to modern day Ethiopia, we find that before the building of Addis Ababa, that most of the high culture of Ethiopia actually came from Hara. This is a surprise to many people because when Ethiopia is mentioned, normally people would think about the Christians of Ethiopia. If they don't think about the Christians, then they may even think about the droughts. They may think about famine. They may think about crisis. But the reality of Ethiopia and Africa, and especially this fabled city, is that it enjoyed all the parts of culture, of high culture, that were enjoyed by people throughout the planet. Hararis, the people coming out of this region, not only organized their own life to a high level, but they also helped to develop the city of Addis Ababa. They were involved in uh, carpentry. They were masons in the building of the city. They were involved in the organization of the streets. And their contributions will be spoken about within Ethiopia for a long time. One strange report that comes from Hara is that they even found tombstones that they believe dated back to the time of Najashi. Najashi radiallahu an, the emperor who had given sanctuary to the Muslims in the time of the first hijra, the first migration from Mecca, he was a well-known personality. But most of the books of history end the discussion concerning Ethiopia at the time of Najashi and it never really opens back up again for centuries. The reality is, when a great ruler accepts any religion, his people accept with him. Najashi struggled against the worship of idols. Najashi struggled against the misunderstandings of the teachings of Jesus, the son of Mary, peace and blessings be upon him. And even though it is not recorded openly in the books, we are now finding information that points to the possibility that some of the companions of Najashi escaped the region after his death and went into the section of Ethiopia of Hara from a, from a high mountainous area of Aksum. They went down into Hara, which is now in the southeast area in Ethiopia, and they helped to develop this mysterious city. 
which is now coming to the surface as an important capital for Islamic scholarship and Islamic culture. And so we look again at the history of Africa. When we look in objective eyes, when we really look at the sources, we recognize that the misunderstandings coming out of history, when dishonest historians would say that Africa had no civilization, that Africa did nothing towards the onward flow of humanity, this misunderstanding needs to be corrected. Young scholars with objective minds need to now enter into the languages of Africa, the languages of the Middle East, to understand this rich history and what it had to give to the people in early times. Today in Ethiopia, Muslims make up somewhere between 40 to 60 percent of the population. And Hara as a city is on the rise. It was even given the UNESCO uh, award being the city of peace. They consider it to be the city of peace for the whole world. This is an understanding that, that needs to be realized by people not only in Ethiopia, not only people in the Horn of Africa, but people throughout the planet. Hara was part of the natural extension of Islamic culture. Hara was an example of Islam spreading into the African continent, spreading into other parts of the world without violence, without a large army, without an imperialistic force. Hara was an expression of African culture through the Arabic language and through the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And so the walls and gates of Hara are wide open. The forbidden city has now become an open city. And the people of Hara and Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa will play, God willing, an important role in the onward flow of Islam and we believe also in raising up African culture in this world. And so we look again to the lights coming to us from untold stories in world history. These gems of wisdom need to come out of their treasure chests. People need to begin to go through the surface of their history books and really d dig deeply into the stories and history of this planet. I leave you with this thought and I leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.